this was actually, just by way of story, was the first painting I did in the series. And I was still getting my feet wet about what I wanted to do. I wanted to do, you know, bright light on snow, but this had a lot of contrast. This is on paper, and there's, a, there's quite a lot of built up texture on it. But, so there is really a, a spatial progression. I'll do something kind of, kind of weird right now. Let's see, hope this works. I'm just going to take the painting and turn it upside down. And if, if it's working, you will still feel that you're going from here back. Like this will go back, whether it's upside down or right side up. By the way, that could be done with any of the paintings here. And hopefully, that would be the case, because what makes things come forward and go back are universal. Their shapes, values, colors, texture, all those things. They're going to do that upside down or not. So that's why we turn our paintings upside down sometimes. OK. And here's another one of these digital studies. And you can see I, I was finding my way. I wasn't sure, like, how do I translate that, that mountain, that set of shapes, into uh, a coherent composition? And the reason I like digital studies is because unexpected things happen. You run these filters, as you might know. And you run the filter, and it's like, sprink. It's like, whoa, where'd that come from? Or you run two filters, and it's like, oh my goodness, where'd that come from? Or you replace a color entirely, and it's like, where'd that come from? And you, it's a sort of a, it creates a lot of happy accidents. And so sometimes uh, just this, this uh, accidental digital study is, is where I get my direction from. So again, it isn't always entirely from the source. It's, it's a little piece of the source then altered and twisted and reshaped. OK. And then the um, last painting in the series, uh, which is uh, from the same source as this one, but a very a, a, a different section. And this one was a much tighter cropping. And then I used a vertical format. Again, it's, the only, it's only two paintings in the show that have a vertical format. And vertical formats as you might imagine, have a tendency to want to do this. They bring you inward and upward. Square formats are like, well, let me say this just for formats. Wide formats are about this. They take you this way. That's their natural energy. Vertical formats take you this way. That's their natural energy. They take you inward and upward. Square formats. They don't, they don't do any of that. They just kind of hold you right there in the center, which is why I choose square formats a lot, because I don't want external energies, horizontal or vertical, directing you. I want to direct you with my composition. And it also heightens the abstraction for me, which is one reason why I'm such a big fan of square formats. OK. so. This one, just again, backstory, was the last painting um, that I did uh, for the show. And this one is another one that has a really nice uh, variation of texture. Um, opaque built up. You can see some, some scraped palette knife work along here and some brush work. Pretty quickly gives way to medium textured paint. And then inevitably um, gives way to just no texture and kind of transparent layers. But of course, it's not just that. I mean, the, if you look at the design and the architecture of the shapes, they're taking you back. Again, I'll just turn this upside down. And you're starting at a different place, but you're, here you're starting here and then you're dropping back. Oop, we don't want to do that. Right, and we're dropping back. So the space is going to work either way. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. We have a few minutes, right? Yes. Yeah, there's a question in the back there. Oh, very good question. I absolutely am. And it, 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 part of it's intuitive, and part of it is, is from study and from uh, you know, what makes a good composition work. But um, the general answer that I could give you is, is, the, is, the, is what is the distribution of shapes? 
um, I, I hope and I like to think that a good painting can be broken down into anywhere between three to seven broad shapes. And so, again, whether one is doing that intuitively, as I have done most of my life, or more consciously, as I'm starting to do it now and some other artists do it, um, we don't want lots of little shapes. We don't want lots of big shapes. We want big shapes and small shapes that fit together in such a way that, well, in my case, that suggest space, that move, move you back. So I am thinking about re fewer shapes rather than more shapes and a variation of um, shape sizes as opposed to them all being the same. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Um, do you, do you uh, start with a limited palette, or do you start with a big palette and then bring in your colors? Um, okay. She's asking about, do I start with a limited palette? Um, I think the question is, like, do I use a limited palette? And um, it depends on how limited you mean. Uh, I, I, I'm not a three or four color palette painter person. I have a, I call it a, a, an ex, a limited expanded palette. It's, it's, it's limited like I have two blues, warm and a cool blue, I have a warm and a cool red, and I seem to, hmm, no surprise, have a, a large amount of yellows. Um, <laughs> And so I expand open in the yellows. So maybe there's, I have, I have a Naples, Nickel Titanite, Cadmium, uh, Yellow Ochre. There's, there's a few yellows in there. And then that's my base palette. And then other colors get introduced on an as-needed basis. They're not out all the time like uh, you know, Viridian Green or Thalo Green, which I used quite a bit in, in some of the yellow paintings. Uh, so basically, you know, cool and warm of each primary, a few extra yellows, and then other colors on an as-needed basis. So I, I think the answer to the question is yes, it's a fairly limited palette. It's not like there's 15, 20 colors out or anything like that, which I think is a good, the fewer colors, the better. Just like shapes, the fewer shapes, the better, the fewer colors, the better. Good. Any other questions? No questions. All right, I guess that's yeah, going to be a wrap. Lead, maybe a leading question. A leading question, uh, OK. I don't know if it's uh, as eloquently as you can in your own words, but your goal is this uh, with some of these paintings, or is the tail still oh, out there um, for you? To, are you still chasing that? I've, I've that caught, I've, I think I've caught the fox about five times in this, in this series. <laughs> and he got away, and I, I, I'm planning on going fox hunting again. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not done with this. I, I, I mean, I'm happy with all, all the babies in my family here. But you know, like anything, some are more successful than others. But the, uh, these indirect light paintings, those, those were the ones that, that I was trying to cast the biggest magical spell with. Those were the ones that I was trying to do the most difficult thing that I hadn't done before. And so to be able to pull that off in any measure was enormously satisfying. So, uh, so I'm very pleased with that. And I think that there's much more room to explore, to explore that. And that's, I, I think, where I'm, I'm going to be headed. People say, what's next? And I says, well, I don't know, but that might be where I'm headed, the fox hunt. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? OK, well, thank you all for coming.